Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Wednesday morning to you all. I hope you guys are doing awesome out there this morning and having a wonderful start to your day and a great week out there so far. Here to bring you the latest information that we got weather-wise across the entire lower 48. For your Wednesday, of course, we will start this video off by discussing the latest info that we have on what's going on out there in the tropics, the Atlantic. There is a couple areas of interest that we are watching. Is there any named storms out there? No. Uh, is there any hurricanes that we're tracking? Absolutely not. The next named storm is Francine. After that, it's Gordon. But folks, since Ernesto, the E name, things have really shut down out here in the tropics. We had a few days there where things were looking concerning, I would say. Um, with an area of interest that at that time was out in the central Atlantic. But since then, over the last few days, things have calmed down, chilled out in model guides. But there's a couple areas I am watching, especially the Gulf of Mexico, maybe the Bay of Campeche, heck, maybe even the Western Caribbean that I want to discuss in this update on the tropics. And we'll talk about all these other areas also. But all in all, folks, I mean, it continues to be uh, pretty slow out there. And we're pretty close to calling, I would say... You know, I've been really hesitant on saying this, but we're pretty close to calling this hurricane season a bust in terms of um, the forecast amount of storms uh, that were predicted for this hurricane se season. As you guys know, this was predicted to be a hyperactive hurricane season, and it has not been to this point. But I do have a hunch that things are going to uptick uh, for the second half of September and then the first half of October. Just a gut feeling. I'm not really basing it off anything. It's just a gut feeling. So we'll continue to track and make these a an important portion of these videos as we continue to move a little bit deeper into September. So if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. If anybody has anything that I can pray about or pray over, please put those in the comments below let's get rocking and rolling this morning so we'll circle a couple pieces out here let's make sure this is working for us and it is so we're good to go so we are watching this area right here um just some tropical activity out here in the central atlantic which we would expect at this time of the year here in early september uh is there anything well put together consolidated any kind of tropical cyclone no but we are watching this this is where one of our area of Areas of interest are located. And then we're still watching this area right here in the Caribbean that, you know, is not looking very impressive this morning. Just some showers and storms. I mean, let me know what you're seeing in Jamaica, Cuba, if you're tuning in from that area. But, you know, once upon a time, a few days back, um, where this area of interest is, they were thinking that some of these some of these model runs were thinking that, hey, we could have a full-fledged hurricane right here, maybe at least a tropical storm. Obviously, we're in real time right now this morning, and that's you know not going on. So that's the good news. This still looks very unorganized. Certainly not a tropical cyclone with a defined low-level circulation. As of now, we're not super concerned about it. And we're still just watching this kind of area of disturbed weather off the coast of Texas and Louisiana that some model guidance really shows it trying to develop at the last second. Like the HRRR model, which, by the way, is not a good model to look at as far as the tropics. Um, is showing this developing into a tropical storm over the next 48 hours. So we still got to watch that. It could do something sneaky, not just over the next 48 hours, but over the next several days. It's just energy's trapped sort of in the Gulf of Mexico with these stalled frontal boundaries that are sagging across the south. So these are all the pieces out here in the Atlantic. Nothing concerning whatsoever. Um, we get this all back off your screen. We continue to head forward here. And the latest information from the National Hurricane Center, here's this one area of interest here, has a 30% chance to develop sometime in the next seven days, just watching for some energy to consolidate out here in the uh, tropical Atlantic. We have this area right here. And if you kind of jump and you look at the actual satellite here, I mean, it's hard to distinguish both of these. I mean, it's right here and it's right here, but I mean, you would think, well, why isn't this an area of interest also? But they're just kind of watching these and what the models do uh, with this shower and storm activity out here in the Atlantic. It doesn't latch on to something, and that's why they plug these areas, areas of interest, because they could develop into something. So uh, we continue to move and relook at this here. And this is our main area we've been watching over the last, what, several days, right? This tropical wave is located where this yellow X is. The chances of it developing into a de tropical depression or a named storm have actually dropped from a 40 to a 30%. So we went from that orange shaded color to that yellow shaded color and has a 30% chance to develop somewhere in this yellow area 
um, in the next seven days. So we continue to watch this. We've been watching it for a while. But overall, chances have dropped for it to develop into a tropical depression or a named storm. Now, we look at the European model. What is it showing? Anything concerning or anything like that? Well, it, no, it's not. But I'm going to show it to you anyways. But, you know, this is where our tropical wave is right here, where this blob of green is. And, and you know, I've, I've said this many times. This area of green down here doesn't look any different than this area of green up here. This area of green in the gulf of mexico but this is where our wave is and if you watch it kind of keep your eyes down here does it develop does an l pop up anywhere showing us that maybe we can get a, we're getting a low pressure coming together well you continue to move this forward and i mean it's hard to even follow it with your eyes like where is it it's likely somewhere over the yucatan peninsula or just west or east of it and this energy sort of cruises over central america brings a lot of tropical activity and does it do anything? I mean, we're all the way into Saturday morning now. We're all the way into, you know, Sunday morning. It looks like just a lot of moisture in the Bay of Campeche in the Gulf of Mexico. We get into next Monday morning, nothing. Next Tuesday morning, nothing. Wednesday, and yeah, we take it 10 days out, folks. And yeah, I mean, at day 10, it finally shows a low pressure developing in the Gulf of Mexico. But folks, all in all, to me, all it, does, all it looks like to me is a bunch of unsettled weather in the Gulf of Mexico, which we know unsettled weather in the Gulf of Mexico this time of the year can certainly develop into something tropical. It definitely, I mean, well, it is tropical already, but, you know, something more defined, something can consolidate and develop into a tropical cyclone. So we got to watch it. But the euro, as far as the entire 10 days through, does not show any kind of tropical development. GFS that's still running right now. Does it show anything starting off uh, tomorrow morning? We get into Friday morning. Just try to develop uh, this area of interest right the last second as it cruises into Central America, but it never has time to and runs into land. Therefore, land interaction doesn't allow it to strengthen. And we continue to move forward here. Just a lot of tropical activity over Central America. Nothing concerning or anything like that. Just a lot of heavy rain. And, you know, we get all the way into next Tuesday. September the 10th, nothing. Next Wednesday, nothing. Next Thursday, I mean, we're getting past seven days out now. We're getting eight days out. Nothing's going on. A lot of moisture getting trapped into the Gulf of Mexico right here, as you can tell. Not a whole lot of anything going on up here because a front has sagged all the way down here at this point. And up here is uh, pretty much calm weather. Not a whole lot going on down here in the Gulf of Mexico and even off the coast of the southeast, you got a lot of unsettled weather. And like I've mentioned, this unsettled weather could develop in a, a tropical system. It's very possible. But, you know, you go all the way out 10 days and nothing ever gets going. I mean, we do have a hurricane way out here in the Atlantic, not really bothering anybody. A little baby hurricane. That thing is small, very tiny. But closer to home, folks, nothing. Now, the icon and the Canadian, you know, disagrees with... The main models, which is the Euro and the GFS. The icon, like the latest one from this morning, goes 120 hours out, takes that area of interest into the Western Caribbean, does not develop it. We get into Saturday, we get into this coming Sunday, and then you have a low pressure developing in the Bay of Campeche. And it starts to move north and strengthens into a tropical storm sometime at the end of this weekend. Now, the get concerned about that if you live a bit, little bit further north into Texas and Louisiana? Absolutely not, because the icon is showing it only and the GFS and the Euro and not really showing anything. Now, I can say the Canadian is kind of showing something similar, takes the energy into the Yucatan Peninsula. It actually gets it back over out over the um, Bay of Campeche here and then develops it. And now we have a tropical storm Sunday evening in the Bay of Campeche at 998 millibar low which would tell us it's probably a tropical storm and then doesn't really develop it much develop it much and then move it in and then moves it into the mexico coastline and then that's all she wrote with it but we still have to watch energy that continues to kind of spin around out here in the gulf and the the boc for short instead we don't have to keep saying bay of campeche a lot of people in the weather community call it the boc and maybe you guys local to that area call it that too but you know, we got a low pressure that tries to pop off off the coast of the southeast here. And that could happen. That very well could happen with so much energy kind of getting kind of bogged down to the Gulf of Mexico and off the coast of the southeast. So that's certainly something to watch. But 
The latest from the European Ensemble, you know, this is going a week out. It does show multiple L's down here in the BOC, in the Gulf of Mexico, um, which tells us, hey, there's a possibility, there's a little signal here that something could develop. And uh, anytime I say develop, guys, I always want to reiterate this. I mean develop into a depression or a name storm. Uh, but we go about 10 days out, see what this shows. And yeah, I mean, that's not a very heavy signal at all. I mean, just a several L's out of 51 that make up the EPS. So not a very strong signal at all, guys. So that's an update on the tropics. You know, overall, it just continues to be slow out there. It, the, you know, each passing day that we go with the tropics and there continues to show nothing, the more baffled people get. But I think everybody is beginning to accept the fact that this hurricane season is not even going to be close to what was predicted. So just a weird one. You know, we started off crazy with Hurricane Barrel. You're thinking, wow, here we go. Um, nonstop all the way through October. And, you know, we've seen what's happened over the last couple months. But weather back home, uh, we do have areas of rain and shower and storm activity through north Texas, through southeast Oklahoma, Arkansas. We got a lot of tropical moisture along and just off the coast of Texas. I mean, we even got some flash flood warnings down here in southern sections of the state. Uh, tropical moisture off the coast of the Panhandle, some tropical moisture off the coast of the southeast. I'm not sure what's up with the resolution on this radar. It's been like this for the last few days. Maybe I'm just imagining things. Maybe my contacts are just blurry. I'm not sure, but it just does not look like the resolution is, is that clear on this radar here, but uh, I'm not sure, but you guys add your opinion on that. But the Rockies, we got a little bit of moisture cruising across that area into the high plains, a little bit of light rain activity in northern Minnesota, and then it turns around and surges south right in here throughout Ontario as a trough is digging across areas of the northeast and progressing eastward. So that's what's going on this morning. A lot of areas waking up to some pretty comfortable temperatures, including my neck of the woods. We're all the way down to about 60, 61 degrees here at my house in Columbia, South Carolina. So it's really nice. But watches, warnings, and advisories. Big time heat on the way. Excessive heat watches in this burgundy color. Excessive heat warnings in this purple here. Heat advisories in the orange and red flag warnings in the hot pink. Dry and hot conditions. We definitely need a big drought buster out here. Flood watches remain in effect for areas of um, Texas. And I oh, just uh, realized that this is old. So this is from sep the morning of September um, the 2nd. Wow. I think I showed you an old one yesterday too. So, man, what are y'all doing, Pivotal Weather? You, you're, making me, you're making me look bad. So we're actually going to have to go to the new one here. Yeah, this is the new one. So we're going to actually have to go to the National Weather Service site. So heat advisories up for the Pacific Northwest. Sorry about that, guys. Now we do have the excessive heat warnings across the Southwest. So they've been upgraded from watches to warnings. Flood watches along the coastal areas of Louisiana, uh, Mississippi, Texas coastline. Um, and then we do have heat advisories across southern sections of uh, Florida. So sorry about that. Sorry about the mix up. So I think I did show you wrong information yesterday morning because that hasn't been updated since September the 2nd, which was two days ago. So pretty wild stuff. But uh, we do have the right graphics for this. We do have a slight risk for excessive rainfall in a good chunk of Louisiana, areas of southern Mississippi, and still areas of southeastern Texas where we do have that means we have a 15% chance of rainfall exceeding flash flood guidance within 25 miles at any given point. And then the severe weather outlook, just a very large area from Minnesota all the way back down to uh, Colorado and Wyoming and Montana includes a good chunk of the Dakotas, uh, 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 pretty much the entire half of Nebraska, level one out of five risk of severe weather, gusty winds, small hail, very possible in this area. So be aware of that and some thunderstorms possible along the Gulf Coast line. The southeast, did not mean to push that, the southeast today, um, rain will continue to kind of hover around the Gulf Coast line or along the southeast coastline. It's not going to be able to make it pretty far inland because of so much dry air in place with this um, backdoor cold front that's kind of sweeping across and hanging out along the uh, Carolinas here. But a lot of uh, shower and storm activity and tropical downpours along the Gulf Coast line will continue. This will work its way inland throughout the evening, as you can tell. You know, some of this activity could push a little bit further inland, and we could get some shower activity 
along the eastern sections of South Carolina, maybe even North Carolina. We'll continue just to have the chances of shower and storm activity across Florida. But, you know, overall, folks, you know, this looks to be confined to mainly the coastal areas. If you notice, most of this activity is just kind of hanging, hanging out around um, this area right into here. So, you know, obviously this isn't the coastal area of Georgia, but you get what I'm saying, kind of just tucked in further south of all these Gulf states and southeast states here as, uh, you know, the, the front is kind of hanging out along this area. A lot of dry air in this area, kind of preventing any kind of shower activity. Um, but we are starting to get a little bit more of a surge of moist air right in here. So we could get a little rain up into Memphis later this afternoon into this evening. But overall, nothing too significant across the southeast today. Pretty calm weather. We're going to get some shower activity. It does get a little bit further north up into northern Alabama, northern Mississippi, southern sections of Tennessee, northern Georgia. So we could wake up to a damp start up there for your Thursday morning and maybe even a stormy start down here like near Savannah for Thursday morning. So uh, the northeast today, folks, there's nothing to really speak on. A nice day getting into this afternoon. This evening, the overnight hours, all the way in tomorrow morning, to tomorrow morning. And um, yeah, nothing to really speak on at all. You know, you're going to have a very nice day of weather, that's for sure. But uh, moving forward here and looking at the south central U.S., most of this area is, I mean, pretty decent. It's just once you get down to Texas, very rainy start out there. You know, we're going to continue to get some lingering showers across northern Texas, some scattered showers and downpours across western texas but once you get down to louisiana uh in the coastal regions of texas this afternoon to this evening you're going to continue to get this push of downpour activity into the texas coastline louisiana coastline even points inland where several inches of rain could add up over the next 24 to 48 hours i mean you guys I, i'm sure you're kind of getting sick of the rain down here you guys have seen the same pattern for about seven days now and um, I'm sure some areas have picked up several inches of rain. You guys will have to let me know what you're seeing down here. But we're getting into tomorrow morning. And check out how the HRRR model develops this low pressure here and actually drops it in millibars, gets it all the way to almost a 1,000 millibar tropical storm. And that looks like a tropical system um, as we are getting into late this work week. Is this going to happen? I mean, I, I wouldn't rule anything out. Uh, because the HRRR model, the HER model, is not a very good model with the tropics, but it is pretty a, a wild looking scenario there, there that could happen a little bit for sure. I cannot talk this morning either. It's been about three or four videos in a row where I've been struggling to talk, but we're going to continue to muscle through this. But we get into midday today, just a closer look at Louisiana and uh, Texas here. You know, here's these downpours, you know, nothing severe really expected with this, just heavy, heavy rain same thing you guys have been experiencing not really any different today but this will continue just to funnel into the texas coastline and then louisiana tech uh the louisiana coastline here and then get several counties and parishes inland here and then we'll start to get some downpours it'll get all the way into the gulfport area even mobile alabama and then we'll do it all again tomorrow morning in fact tomorrow uh, looks wide, more widespread. It looks like we could have a little bit more of a flooding situation. And here comes what looks like a tropical storm. Look, it even has an eye to it. We have to watch that feature. That's going to be wild because if somehow this does develop into a tropical storm into the northwest Gulf of Mexico, that will certainly be a big win for the HER model, which is not known to be very accurate when it comes to the tropics, the HER or the uh, NAM model. So, as far as millibar low pressure, you can look at it as far as, you know, the precipitation map and stuff like that. You know, sometimes not too much, but as far as like deepening a low pressure, not the best at it. But rainfall between now and the next 24 hours, as you can tell, just confined to that coastline of Texas to maybe as much as three inches of rain. A lot of this is falling right now, though. And then we head on up to Louisiana. Where are you at? Where are you at? Right here. And... um Good bit of rain over the next 24 hours, you know, pockets of a half inch to an inch of rain is expected. But look as we move into tomorrow. So we go all the way out to uh, Friday morning and just wash out conditions across this area. I mean, all the way up into central Louisiana, all the way up to Jackson, Mississippi. I mean, even Meridian, you know, an inch, inch and a quarter, two inches of rain is possible. And we take it a little bit further all the way out to Friday evening. Just a good old washout on the way for this area, for sure. And this plume of moisture is likely going to push all the way into the southeast 
as we are getting uh, into our Friday evening and Saturday morning. In fact, I'm I'm thinking it's going to get into my neck of the woods, and they might, you know, end up canceling our soccer game this Saturday. I got a hunch they might, but anyways, good bit of rain expected down there up here in the north central U.S. You know, there is a shot at strong to severe storms across. Let me circle this area, across this entire area. You know, but the the her model doesn't really show it being very widespread. It doesn't really show a super aggressive scenario with. You know a lot of strong and severe storms but there is a risk of any energy that can get going here and we get any kind of widespread storm activity they could pack a punch be strong and severe up here in the north central u.s and the dakotas but looks more like just rain to me to be honest with you but you know could be in the form of some storms in fact you know we start to get into tomorrow morning the wee hours of the morning northern wisconsin into the western up of michigan does show a thin line of heavy rain maybe even some rumbles of thunder some storms rumbling through the area tomorrow morning so expect a wet start thursday morning for northern wisconsin and then the up of michigan um but moving out west i think once you get into like wyoming this is when and even northern colorado this is where y'all guys could certainly see more of a significant a uh, threat of severe weather and i wouldn't say significant but a higher threat of severe weather as you can see these yellows and orange and reds which is telling us that we're probably going to have some more widespread storm activity anywhere in the state of wyoming today northern colorado and some of this energy will make it all the way into western nebraska in the form of some storms could get some storms around laramie uh cheyenne you guys could certainly see a stormy um late afternoon evening in this region won't be won't be too long before you guys start to see snow instead of storm activity so um, i always love watching the first big time cold front drop through the rockies um typically it happens probably here in the next several weeks a few weeks maybe and uh i know some of you folks call it a blue northern where you know one day in denver for example you know it's like 85 degrees and the next day it's 30 degrees and you're getting a blizzard so I uh, always love, even though we don't get anything too crazy like that here in the Carolinas, um, anything comparable to something like that would probably be the wedge, cold air damming. Um, but uh, nothing too crazy like that. I've always thought it'd be cool to experience something like that. But, you know, not forecasting anything like that right now. But temperatures, not overly hot anywhere, not overly, overly cool anywhere, really. Nice day in the northeast, you know, 70s, 60s southeast 80s even some 70s in north carolina a little bit of 90s here in the deep south it was starting to get warm again remember we were expecting this warm up midway through the week before another big time cool down later this week into this weekend and that's exactly what's happening we're getting into the 80s across the midwest the ohio valley pocket of warm air across uh, the high plains and just the central plains of the u.s with temperatures in the 80s and 90s rain cooled air in texas and then getting pretty hot out west. Even the the valleys between you know the Cascades and the um what do y'all call it the um, coastal range of Oregon very warm you know 80s and 90s Valley of California 90s and hundreds and then the Southwest and the hundreds. So I think I saw where Phoenix Arizona had their hundredth day in a row of a hundred degree temperatures or higher. Uh, so I think that just shattered your record that was like 70 something days in a row previously. So it's quietly been consistently hot in the Southwest this year, for sure. Just nothing there. We haven't had any, I would say, ridiculous, like crazy heat waves or anything like that. So that's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, you know, for me, I would say that when things are popping off and, and very active, I typically perform the best with doing these videos. And I know you folks say you're way too hard on yourself and that's just how I get better. But when it gets kind of relaxed and slow like this, typically I get relaxed and kind of slow and just not as fluent with my words and, and, and these videos because it's like, it's, it's just it's just tough to kind of talk about sometimes it's the same stuff over and over again when there's not a whole lot going on and i'm a weather nerd guys I, I get excited when there's something to talk about i don't get excited for a major hurricane to rumble through mississippi or something and destroy people's lives that's not what i'm talking about but just to talk weather and um you know when there's nothing really to talk about there's just you're just kind of repeating the same information but i'm going to keep coming on here 
and updating you guys of what's going to happen weather wise across the entire little 48 like i always do that's become a staple of these videos on my youtube channel so thank you guys to continue to tune in and uh, make this part of your routine i certainly appreciate y'all very much and uh, you guys have a wonderful day and i'll talk to you tomorrow morning god bless